We're in the house right now, you know what I'm saying, chilling in this fabulous studio with the homie, Gifted and Blessed, right here. I'm chilling with your boy, Merc80, Merc80.com. What's going on? How you doing, man? All right, I'm chilling. Um, firstly, just real briefly, can we get a look at some of this equipment that you got going on here? Maybe just list off, rattle off some of these things that you got? Real briefly, it's yeah. essentially just... Uh, bunch of analog synthesis going on and don't really want to get into specifics but it's all pre-85 for the most part did you do that on purpose or was that just like you know you just started uh, getting that stuff? the intentional side of it is uh, my preference for analog uh, electronics yeah. um, generally the sound of analog electronics has a much warmer and fuller uh, impact um, digital recording and digital processing um, is only basically an image of what an analog electronic setup can do. Um, mm. You're cutting off your high frequencies and your really low frequencies when you're dealing with digital. Mm. When you're dealing with analog, you're you know capturing essentially the way that you're intending to hear it is the way that it comes off on the recording. So wow, it's okay. my, my choice, my weapon of choice. First question is, in your own words, how did you fall in love with music, and um, you know how you got into doing what you do now? been loving music since day one pretty much um earliest memories revolve around me playing music or loving music there's always a song that's a reference point for different parts of my life i mean music's always been there um but started taking it seriously um in early college or you know end of high school basically started working with garth trinidad over at kcrw um excuse me working at kcrw connected with garth through kcrw um, getting my music over to him, he likes it. I started taking myself more serious, you know, developing my craft. And then in about 2003, that's when I put out my first records with a label called Sound and Color. And then since there, it's just been growing and developing, expanding on the sounds. It's pretty much uh, the story. When you were growing up, did your parents play music, or did they? Um, did they, were they, they I mean, they played records. You know, yeah. they definitely um, exposed me to a lot of different styles of music and uh, you know different artists, but. They weren't musicians, neither of them. Definitely had a love for it, and so that was uh, helpful in my exploring it. Um, but you know, I'm kind of the first one to take that path, pretty yeah. much. What were some of the things that you remember listening to when you were younger or growing up listening to? Mm, man, everything from a lot of uh, salsa, fania stuff from my mom, you know, Joni Mitchell, a lot of jazz, Coltrane, Miles Davis, Wes Montgomery, I mean, yeah, the spectrum. Then like the new wave stuff from my older brother and sister. Um, yeah, a lot of different stuff. Looking at your website, um, the sound of your music, the way that you're speaking now is a very large influence, I think, of uh, spirituality mm. uh, in the music. Um, where does that come from for you? Is that is that something separate of your upbringing or is that something that you kind of grew into putting into the music or, you know? I mean, again, for me, it's like the music. It's like drawing on everything, you know what I mean? So the, even the spiritual, it's like that's just drawing on the, my lifetime up to this point, you know what I'm saying? Definitely not trying to be on like a, I'm more spiritual than anybody else because I'm not. But, you know, I'm, I do recognize um, my gifts and I recognize the blessings that, you know, pretty much everyone's got access to, you know what I mean? So, but not definitely not trying to be you know, pull, playing the, the card of uh, holier than thou, you know what I'm saying? That's right. not, you know, it's not the draw. It's just uh, acknowledgement and of the grace, you know what I'm saying? That just is. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, speaking on that, uh, just even in the in the name, Gifted and Blessed, like, mm. did you come up with that name yourself? or? Um, yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. And, you know, it just, it's how I felt, you know what I mean? It's not, oh, you know, my name, that's not my name, you know, my name is Gabriel, you know what I mean? So... That's that's my name. I'll always keep that separate. It's pretty much gifted and blessed. Actually, GB is more of a character than mm -hmm. anything. It's um it's a mode of being able to express myself. It's not what I identify as. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's how I feel about gifted and blessed as well. It's just it's just a a tag. You know, mm -hmm. something to, something to call it, but not something to label it as all the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm I've known a lot of producers to have like a few different aliases in mm -hmm. terms of how 
you know, to express their different styles. Mm. So is that something that you're looking into doing? Is that gifted? Not looking style? into doing. I've already done. I mean, I've, I've released music under different names. I have a, a CD called Julian Abelar that's available, and that's um, kind of a tribute to the work of Carlos Castaneda, a writer. Um, you know, I have another project called The Reflector. Yeah, definitely do things for different reasons um, to different demographics under different names, mm. you know. Why the different name? Um, so you don't have to think of what I'm doing as being of one style, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of times if people hear some music that sounds out of the ordinary for GB, then they may not be as willing to accept it. Mm. If they hear it as being by somebody they never heard of, they may be more open to it as just letting it be what it is, you know what I mean? That's kind of the thing about once you kind of, once people pick up on something you're doing, they want you to stay there forever, you know what I'm saying? And doing things under different names, it's kind of just enables uh, an artist to express himself in different ways. I mean, writers have been writing under different pen names for the longest, you know, and musicians have been doing the same. So um, it's nothing new. Surest way to find my materials is just to go to my website, giftedandblessed.com. Um, you can find me on Facebook, just search GB Gifted and Blessed. I'm on Twitter, twitter.com slash giftedblessed. MySpace, I mean, all the online spots, you can find me, you can find me on iTunes, just look up GB. It's pretty easy to find. For those uh, other aspiring musicians, producers, um, folks that are trying to get into what you're doing, yep. any final words of advice that you want to tell them? Just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep doing it. You know, it's going to, universe will make a way for it. If it's meant to be, just stick with it. That's it.